Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the Lika question H index. So in this question, we're given an array of citations and uh, we need to write a function to compute the researcher's H index. So what exactly is the H index? So over here, we have the definition. A scientist has index H if H of his or her N papers have at least N cite H citations each. And the other n minus h papers have no more than h citations each. So as it is, I think the definition is pretty confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down step by step. And we're going to be following this uh, question over here. So we're going to take this as our input. So let's just go line by line. So a scientist has index h. So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for the index h. If h of his or her n papers. So over here, let's... Uh, initialize a variable called n and n over here is going to be the number of papers they have and in other words it's going to be the length of our citations array so in this case we have a length of 5 so our n value is going to be 5 okay so a scientist has index h so if h of his or her papers so we have h papers over here so out of these h papers all of these papers have at least h citations each. So the number of citations are equal to or greater than h. So we don't know what the number value h is yet, but h papers have a value greater than or equal to the value h. Okay, so the second part is, and the other n minus h paper, so it's saying the rest of the papers. So in this case, it's going to be the rest of the papers are nothing else but n minus h. So the rest of the n minus h papers have no more than h citations each. So have no more is equal to or less than the value h. So this is what defines the h index. So let's just take the example. So over here, our output is the number three. So let's just rewrite it. So we have three papers. So for papers, I'm just gonna write p, which are equal to or greater than the number three. So what that means is, three papers have at least three citations each. So let's just take a look at that. So we have the value three, so that's one. We have six, so that's two. And we have five, that's three. So as you can see, we have three papers which meet that criteria. Now let's look at the remaining papers. So the remaining papers in this case are the value zero and the value one. And what this is saying is both of these papers, no matter what, have a value which is equal to or less than the h value. So if you look at zero, it's less than h, and h is three, so zero is less than three, and one is also less than three. And this is why the answer for this is three. So now what we're gonna do is let's see at how we can solve this question. So this Wikipedia link has a lot of the information we need. And over here, we can clearly see that, so first we order the values of f from largest to lowest value. Then we look at the last position in which f is greater than or equal to the position. So I think that's pretty simple and let's just write that in code. So our first step over here is going to be to sort our citations. So citations dot sort. And we want to sort it in descending order. So to do that, we just need to do reverse equals to true. So now we sorted it in descending order. So now what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through our citations. But what we need to do is we need to compare the citation value to the value of our index. And the easiest way to do this is by enumerating the list. And what that does is we get a tuple value of our index and then the citation. So to do that for index comma citation in enumerate and we're going to call our citations over here, citations. Okay, over here, we're going to uh, return the index when the index has a greater value than our citation. So in this case, if index is greater than or equal to our citation value, then in that case, we're just going to return our index and that's going to be the H value. But if this is not the case, then we're just going to return. But if that is not the case, we're just going to return the length of our citations. And the purpose of this is because if you go up to our definition over here, 
So if we did not find any answer and our h index is the length of our citations, that means that h of his or her n papers have at least h citations each. So obviously all the papers have more citations than that h value, which is going to be the length of our citations. So if none of these uh, are true, if we do not return anything inside of our for loop, we're going to end up returning the length of our citations. So let's submit our answer and as you can see our submission did get accepted and finally do let me know what you thought about the video and don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Thank you.